Hi, so this is going to be a graphene video. Now, I sometimes get people saying, enough talking, just tell me how to do it. That uh, <laughs> makes me laugh, really. Um, if you can be bothered to watch through, you're probably going to learn something. If you can't be bothered to watch through, then you probably really shouldn't be watching the video. Go and watch somebody crack the nuts on a skateboard or, or stick a fork in the hand or something like that. Don't bother watching the video. But anyway, as you know, I work a lot on graphene and I work consistently and continuously on it. Now, the last method we talked about was um, graphene in the kitchen blender with some soap. And it works quite well, it does produce graphene. But the problem is it produces soapy graphene. So when you apply this graphene and just let it dry, you get a relatively low conductive material because the graphene is covered in soap. If you want to improve the conductivity, well, basically, you've got to wash the soap off. And that's actually more challenging than it sounds. So what we really want is something where we can get the graphene in a solvent and the solvent will just evaporate and we get good graphene out of it. Now there is a methodology for that called liquid phase exfoliation and it uses pretty um, horrible solvents actually like NMP, that kind of thing. They're quite expensive, they're restricted in some countries and they're not very nice to handle. So we want a solvent that will be um, relatively innocuous. Now a lot of these solvents aren't innocuous, they're relatively innocuous. Uh, and we want a methodology that is approachable by everybody. Now, I've been working with one based on the soap and based on um, high-speed exfoliation. And it's a kind of a combination of that, along with another research paper that I was reading where they use sonication. Now, normally liquid phase exfoliation is done in a sonication bath, and for that you need a sonication bath. Like all of these things, there are problems associated with sonication. It heats up for a start, and the bath has to run for hours. Normally these things are run in the sort of time scale of um, 4 to 72 hours, and um, it will burn your bath out if you do that, or you have to buy a tip sonicator, and, and they are excruciatingly expensive. Now, my experiments have actually been done with this thing, because I'm the lucky and proud owner of a lab homogenizer. Um, these things aren't cheap either. That was, um, this particular one was £700. So, um, not a, an inexpensive piece of kit. But I'm guessing that you could do the same thing with a kitchen blender if you wanted to try it. It will probably burn your blender out, but you can buy a blender that has sufficient speed for the sort of £20-£30 region. But you'll be able to do two or three runs and it will burn it out. Now, this thing actually spins up to 13,000 RPM and will last for hours, uh, has interchangeable heads so you can do different things with it, and it's kind of very, very cool, and I use it quite a lot, actually. I'm quite pleased with it, really. Um, so, we're using basically a blender method. I'm using a homogenizer, obviously, but it's a blender method. And it's based on a sonication uh, paper I was reading, talking about graphene solvents. Now, the graphene solvent has to have certain properties, obviously, and something will dissolve as long as the attraction between the solvent and the material is at or slightly greater than the attraction that the plates of graphene have to each other. And finding that solvent has been a, a bit of a challenge. Uh, this one works extraordinarily well and uses da, 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 acetone. If you put graphene in straight acetone, oddly enough, not very much will happen. If you put graphene in water, Again, oddly enough, not very much will happen. But if you mix the two, you get a co-solvent which has very different properties. Once you get those mixed proportions right, then the graphene will actually dissolve and stay in suspension in the right mix of acetone to water. Now the mix is 75% acetone, so 25% water. So you mix up um, 750 mils of acetone, 250 mils of water, you've got a litre, stick about 40 grams of graphite in there and you can use anything from about 100 micrometers down to about 5 micrometers something around about there I used um, 45 micrometers which is 325 mesh so you stick some 325 mesh in there and I used 40 grams of it stick some 325 mesh in there and pop it in your blender or your homogenizer now I ran this at 13,000 top end I ran it at 13,000 rpm for one hour and this feels like blue Peter. <laughs> this is what I got. Ta da! Now, that's been sitting around for about two weeks now, just so that I could do the test on it. 
and you can see that there's a little bit of separation going on at the bottom there and you can see that the solution is very concentrated graphene. That's about four milligrams per milliliter in there and that's been stable for about two weeks now. Um, what I need to do with it is um, put it through a centrifuge at 1000 RPM to centrifuge out any more of the large agglomerates to leave me actually my pure graphene in acetone water solution. So that's what I'll be doing now after I've given that time to settle so that I can see what kind of stability the solution had. It's pretty good. So there we go. Perhaps one of the easiest, cleanest methods I've come across of making bulk graphene in solution where the solution will just evaporate off, leaving you a graphene sheet. Um, I hope that was of interest to you, and I, I hope you're uh, glad you watched all the way through. Anyway, thank you very much for watching.